Wow, it's been a while since I made one of these, but I've been super busy lately with work and training and just everything is, feels like a mess. So for the longest time ever, back in sixth form and in uni in Loughborough, I've always wanted an electric skateboard, but I just couldn't justify buying myself one because I was perfectly fine riding my bike around. However, now being in London for placement year, I've realized a bunch of issues with riding a bike around London. One, drivers in London are super aggressive, especially compared to the campus roads back in Loughborough, so it makes it much more dangerous for me to ride on the road now. Two, bike thefts in London are super common, which means that I just have to take that much longer to properly lock my bike up with a cable, but even then, I can still risk losing parts like my seat posts or my handlebars. And three, it's really hard to find a place under shelter or indoors to store a bike when it rains, so every time it rains, it just means I get welcomed by my lovely wet saddle. Alongside those three reasons for me to hate riding my bike around London, I also happen to live in the perfect location this year, only a five minute commute away from my workplace and the gym. The reason I built one instead of buying one is because being in the UK, it's way more expensive to buy a boosted board compared to if I were to buy it in the US. 200 pounds exactly. And also alternative brands, especially based in the UK, usually kind of suck. So those were the reasons I thought when I chose to build my board. However, after buying all the components from the US and import duties, I now realize that it's pretty much the same price as buying a boosted board. But at least I know my board is now customizable. I know what happens when it breaks and therefore I can fix it. And also it's just a good experience. So anyways, let's get on to the build. Starting with the list of parts needed for this build. I'm gonna start off with the components I use for my longboard, which is almost identical to the boosted board. These components include the loaded Vanguard deck, which is used in the OG boosted boards and rated amongst one of the best freestyle boards in the market with an insane amount of flex. Caliber two trucks, which are high quality, durable, and perform great at high speeds. Orangutan Kagwama ATA wheels, which have an enormous 85 millimeter diameter, as well as being super grippy and soft to make the rides over bumps a little smoother. Bones red bearings, which are the most well-known budget bearings you can get. 1 8 inch riser pads for a bit more clearance between the motor and the deck. And last of all, some 1 inch hardware to bolt the trucks onto the deck. Next is the mechanical and electronic components. These were determined by my budget, which was under £1,000, as well as the board specs I wanted, for example, its top range and its torque. These components include a 6355 190kV motor, which provides a good amount of torque at a generous top speed. And because I'm building a single motor setup, a greater torque is really important. Street Wings motor mount, which clamps onto the trucks to hold the motor in place. 15 to 36 gear ratio pulley system, which drives the wheels to spin from the motor. This includes the 15 teeth motor gear, the 36 teeth wheel gear, and the pulley belt. VESC 4.12, which stands for Vetter Electronic Speed Controller. This is basically the control board or the brains of the electronics, which was designed specifically for electric longboards. Anti-spark switch from M boards. It's important that the switch is compatible with the high current and voltage levels that the board uses because most typical cheap electronic switches will probably fry under these currents. 10S 2P 6 amp hour Samsung battery pack from own boards. This battery kit provides a decent power output and capacity for short to medium commutes, which is what I was looking for. However, if you want more power, you can increase the number of cells in series to something like 12S, or if you want more capacity, you can increase the number of cells in parallel to something like 3P, or if you want more power and capacity, you can increase it to something like 12S 3P. Enclosures. Own boards have their own aluminum enclosure sets for the battery packs and VESCs, which fit the Vanguard board decently. This makes it easier for me because I don't have to go hunting for an enclosure that fits my battery pack or even worse, have to 3D print one for a really high price. And the VESC enclosure has a battery level indicator display built in. So it's easy to check the battery levels of the board at any time. And last of all is the Flipsky VX1 controller and receiver module. This controller is rated one of the best electric skateboard controllers to date, heavily mimicking the Boosted controller's design and features, including three different speed levels and a battery level indicator for the board. Now onto the build. The first step is to assemble the longboard. I started off counter the screw holes so that the screws will sit flush with the deck. Then place the riser pads over the holes followed by the trucks on top. Then bolt them on securely with the skates hardware. Next, slide the bearing onto the truck axle and push the wheel down to pop the bearing into the wheel. Repeat this on the other side so the wheel has both bearings inserted. Then screw the nut onto the end of the axle. It's important to make sure when tightening the nut that there is little to no wiggle room for the wheel, but making sure that the bearings still spin freely. After doing that for all four wheels, the board should be complete. 
Now that the easy part of assembling the board is finished, it's time to move on to the mechanical and electronic components. First, we'll start off with the mechanical parts, which is basically the drivetrain. The drivetrain is all the mechanical components which make the wheel move. This consists of the motor mount, the motor, the pulley kit, and the wheel. I began by unscrewing the two halves of the motor mount. Then, I removed one of the back wheels on the side I wanted the motor to be on, and slid the clamp ring onto the trucks, and secured the motor mount onto it. Next, I placed the key into the motor's key seat and fit the shaft through the motor mount, then slid the motor gear onto the shaft and lightly screwed it into place. Now, I just have to lightly attach the motor onto the mount with a couple of screws so the position can then be adjusted later. Next, to assemble the driven wheel. This was simply fitting the wheel gear into place with the holes in the core of the wheel, then screwing the retainer plate on top of it. Now, I can align the pulley belt over the wheel gear and motor gear. Then pull the motor against the belt to remove any slack and tighten the screws on the motor to firmly hold it in place. Finally, screw the wheel nut back into place to complete the motor assembly. Next step is the electrical components. This one started a little tricky and required a bit more research. However, to simplify things a bit, the electronics configuration works through four main components. The motor, VESC, battery pack, and receiver module dash controller. The controller sends information via Bluetooth to the receiver module, which is connected to the VESC. The VESC then processes the information to know how much power it needs to take from the battery and pushes it into the motor. And hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now alongside these essential components, there are also additional components for better user experience. A switch is used to connect or disconnect the battery from the VESC and the rest of the electronics. So when the board is not in use, the battery isn't wasting energy. A battery level indicator allows you to check the voltage levels dash energy left in the battery. And last of all, a BMI charger allows you to easily and safely charge the bundle of cells in the battery pack. This is what the setup looks like with the physical components that I have. The battery connects to the switch, which then connects to the ESC. The battery also connects to the battery level indicator, which is located on the ESC enclosure. And then finally, all the components fit inside the ESC enclosure. Now taking a quick break from the electronics is actually one thing I completely forgot about when building this board, which was where the main cable goes between the ESC and the battery. But there are actually two options for where this wire goes. The easier but much uglier looking way, which is taped under the deck, or the much harder but cleaner way, which is having the wire run through the deck and having it completely hidden by the grip tape. I didn't mind the clean way just because I have a workshop at the office, which means I have all the tools I needed to do it. However, if you don't, it might just be easier to tape the wires under the deck. So to have the wires above the deck, you need to have two holes where the enclosures will be, as well as a slot running across the two holes if you're using the thick wire that Ownboard provides with the batteries. However, if you use thin braided cables, which is what Boosted uses, you can skip the slot completely as it could just lay flat right under the grip tape. Also, now being a workshop, it's probably a good time to drill the holes where the enclosure fits onto the deck. I started by marking and drilling a small pallet hole where the wires would fit through the deck under the enclosures. Then I slowly increased the size of the hole until the XC60 connectors could fit through. Next, I moved the board onto the milling machine to mill a slot where the wires would fit in. Once that's done, it's time to put the wires in place. Making sure that the wire is fit in the right orientation, I then use epoxy resin to glue it into place while making sure it lays flat with the surface of the deck. Finally, I marked out where the enclosures fit onto the deck and drilled out the screw holes then countersunk them to make sure the screws sit flush with the deck as well. Okay, detour over and back to electronics. Before plugging everything together, the VX1 controller I'm using actually has a battery level indicator for the board built into the controller. But for it to work, I had to solder the white ribbon wire to the positive cable on the VESC. Then connect the receiver module to it. Now it's probably a good time to program the VESC to make sure that everything's working. To program the VESC, you need to download the free VESC tool program available on the website. This has a super simple setup wizard which will run you through everything you need to set up the VESC. Also another quick note, the VX1 controller has already been pre-programmed out of the box so you don't need to set it up at all. At this point, the motor should be responding to the controller's input and it's time to assemble everything. I started by cutting out holes in the sticky pads where the wires would fit through. Then I carefully aligned the sticky pads on the deck and stuck them in place. After that, I connected the battery wires and stuck the battery enclosure onto the sticky pads. Then, I connected the rest of the electronics as mentioned before, stuffed it into the ESC enclosure, and stuck that onto the sticky pads as well. And finally, I screwed in both enclosures and trucks to complete the whole build. And now the very last step is to apply some grip tape onto the deck. And that's how you build an electric longboard. So after riding my board for a few months now, I've realized a few things. 
During the warmer and less rainy seasons in London, it is definitely a fun way to commute. However, as winter approached and rainy days were more frequent, it became a lot more difficult and dangerous to ride. As well as that, the motor and the VSC from the website DIY Electric Skateboard have since broken down, and I've replaced them with what I hope are higher quality components from Maytek China and EB makers. To sum things up, my board is no way going to replace my bike for commuting because it will never be as reliable on wet or busy roads with cars. However, it is still a very fun way to commute and will still be my first choice on days with good weather conditions and quieter roads. So that's it, I'll see you guys next time.